Hi awesome one, so my name is Abraham. If you have been carefully following through our channel, you get to know that we just finished our four part series on decisions which we dab to get to decide. And I know that you were blessed indeed. I have a good news for you, you know what? We are beginning a brand new series on consequences and I want you to stay tuned and your life will never be the same. God bless you. Hi awesome one, I'm so much glad to come your way once again and wherever you're watching me from I want you to know that you are special and God will richly bless you. But I need a favor from you, you know what, I need you to gather friends, I need you to gather relatives, those around you and let's gather around our devices and listen to the word of God and your lives will never be the same. Hallelujah. So if you have been carefully following through our channel and our content, you know that we just finished our four-part series on the subject of decision, which we dubbed, you get to decide. And I thought to myself, there's no way we can talk about decisions without also looking at consequences. So we've dedicated this entire series on talking about consequences. And I know that at the end, our lives will never be the same. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody, hallelujah. But before that, I want to introduce you to this subtopic. We are looking at consequences, and the subtopic is you cannot escape. I want you to say with me, you cannot escape. Or say for the last time, say you cannot escape. Hallelujah. Without wasting much of your time, I want us to read our anchor scripture. And see it's found in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. And most of us would attest to the fact that the Apostle Paul is the author of this particular uh, book in the Bible. The Apostle Paul, who actually started as a sworn enemy of the Christian faith, he began as, 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 as a zealous uh, Pharisee who took upon himself to vanquish all those that believed and held uh, in high esteem the Christian faith. As a matter of fact, it got to a time that the Apostle Paul traveled to Jerusalem to receive the permits from the church elders and, the, and the, 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 the Pharisees that you have the permission to travel up north into uh, all the ter uh, Mediterranean basin to vanquish and to kill all the Christians, to persecute all the Christians who had believed in Jesus Christ. And we all know the aftermath. On his way to Damascus or on his way of Damascus, the Bible says that, and the Lord Jesus Christ appeared unto him. And now his mission was transformed. His mission of pursuing and persecuting Christians was changed to becoming a, a, a flaming evangelist. That's when the Apostle Paul established a lot of churches around the same Mediterranean basin, which he sworn himself to visit to kill the Christians. So the Apostle Paul started building churches all around uh, the villages and the towns in the known Roman Empire. One of the churches he built was a church in Galatia, and he wrote a letter to them. And this is what we are going to read today in verse, uh, chapter 6 of, of, of the book of Galatians, chapter 7 to 9. It's quite profound. So without wasting much of your time, let's read the word of God. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. I'm reading from the King James Version. He says that, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season... We shall reap if we faint not. I want to repeat verse 9 again. He says that, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God bless his word. Can we share a word of prayer? Our Father in heaven, we bless you for the opportunity. We bless you for the invitation that you have extended unto us to participate, O oh Lord, in hearing your word. We do not deem this privilege lightly. We do not we do not take it for granted. Father, one thing we ask you today is that even as your word come, Father, let it come in its fullness and let it come to set us free. For the entrance of your word brings life and brings understanding, O oh Lord, even unto the simple. We pray for illumination and we pray for transformation through your word. Father, I pray once again that you put my body aside and anoint these lips of clay. Let it bring forth words alone that you have uttered that has the capability of transforming the hearers. And at the end, we will say that it is you that have done it. These and mighty things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 
Amen. Uh, just as I rightly said when uh, I started our introduction, I mentioned that the, the subject of decision will never be complete if we neglect or if we avoid talking on the subject of consequences also. So we are beginning a brand new series on the subject of consequences and today we are talking about you cannot escape. I believe that in as much as we term decisions and as, as an integral aspect of our human being that everything we do is about decision. I also believe that in as much as we make decisions each and every single day, we carry alongside the decisions we make also, the consequences that comes with it. Hallelujah. And one of the people that really believe that life is full of decisions and consequences is the Apostle Paul. And this is why he wrote the book or the, the chapter that we just read in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. But before that, Anytime Christians, anytime the congregation of the church hears or see that this particular portion of scripture is being cited or read, one thing that mostly comes into our mind is that, wow, the church is coming to have a harvest or it's time for offertory or they're going to call people to come and pledge, give pledge or just give money. Most of the times, uh, the church hasn't really done so well in how we interpret the scripture. I'm not saying that the church is not interpreting it well. We do it well, but we narrow it to mean only just one aspect. Now, when Paul was talking to the church in Galatia, this particular piece of statement here was not only limited or was not relegated to the act of just giving and receiving back in return. When Paul said that for whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall reap. He wasn't only referring to the act of giving, which means literally giving money and offering in church and gaining blessings in return. The Apostle Paul was looking at something more different and something more broader and wider. But in order for us to understand, I want us to borrow, or I want to borrow some concept in IT or in computing. There are two words, and I know that most of us are familiar with the words. The words are input and output. A student of IT, we know that anything we input, and when I say anything we input, input, input of data can be uh, probably your time, it can be your resource, it can be your decision, anything that we input, that is basically what Apostle Paul is saying, that anything that we input in life always correspond to an output. So when the Apostle Paul said whatsoever, the Apostle Paul was referring to the, to, to the to the fact that in life there are so many things that we do as an input and i mentioned them that our time our time is also something we sow people use the word i spent time i invested my time all these things allude to the fact that all these things i mentioned our time our resource even our life are something that we can input either in our lives or in the lives of other people but one thing we come to embrace and know is that Whenever you input something, or whenever in the words of saw, in the uh, Paul, sorry, whenever we sow something that is your time and action, or even decision, there will always come a time that you are going to reap the same thing that you planted. That is why he says that that shall be also reaped. So, whatever thing you inputted, there will always come a time that you are going to reap back. And the apostle Paul admonished his hearers on the type of things that they should be more focused in sowing. He, he admonished them to, to, to sow to things that profits the spirit and not things that profits the flesh. When he said in verse 18, uh, verse 8, sorry, he said that for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Paul was saying that if you focus on inputting things that will benefit only the flesh they know that you are at loss. Why? Because the flesh is transient. The, the, the flesh is short-lived. The flesh is inferior to the spirit. Anything you dedicate to the flesh will not prevail over time. But Apostle Paul encouraged us. He says that, But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. He says that the things of the spirit are everlasting, are never ending, are, 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 are long term. They do not expire like the things of the flesh. So the apostle Paul encouraged them that in as much as there is a cause and effect or in as much as there is an input and output principle in life, when you are given something with the anticipation of receiving something in return, your major focus should be be based on sowing things that edifies the spirit and not things that edifies the flesh when he said that. But that is not my major concern. I want us to run quickly to verse 9. He says that 
Let us not be weary in well-doing. The apostle Paul now became more specific. He entreated us to focus on doing things that are really well. Our input should be based on things that are well, things that are good, things that edify. And why is the apostle Paul saying that? If indeed there is a principle in nature that ensures that we reap back what we sown, then it is better or it will be better for you to input things that are well because for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, I want to say something quickly, but before that, let me introduce you to uh, a philosophy, a philosophy, uh, sorry, 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 uh, or a group of, or a school of thought. Uh, this concept is called deism. Now, when I say deism, deism are, are the people of the school of thought that God, uh, they believe in an absentee God. When I say an absentee God, I'm referring to that. Uh, they believe that God, or there was a God who created the heavens and the earth, being it a Christian God or any other religion God, they don't concern themselves with. But when they look at the earth, they d definitely believe that there was a God who created the world. And after that God had created a universe, what he did was that he just placed in certain mechanisms and principles that will ensure that the world and the earth that he has created will be in session, will be up and running. And what that God did was that after setting those institutions and those principles to ensure that the wealth or the earth that he has created is still in session, he left and traveled. He just he just left. He is just absent. He's out of his creation. He doesn't engage in the things that he created. And one of the major things they champion or one of the major things they propound or believe in is that in as much as God or the, their God is absent, their God has put in certain mechanisms that will make sure that the world runs. And one of the things or one of the principles they believe that God or their God set in motion whilst he's not even alive or he's not around is the principle of reaping and sowing. So deities, when I say deities, deities are those who believe in the philosophy of deism. Deities believe that in as much as God is absent to them, they believe that whatever a man reaps, he sows. Because this is one of the principles that God embedded or their God inculcated and embedded, incorporated in the world he created. Hallelujah. Now, if you're a Christian, you may not necessarily subscribe to the concept of an absentee God, but there is one part of us. As a matter of fact, let me not even relegate it or limit it to only Christians. As a matter of fact, as a human being, there is one part or there is a particular portion of our subconscious that has been made to believe that whatever thing that we do in life always corresponds to a particular result. You don't need me to come here to tell you that whatever thing you do would yield a particular result or effect. You don't have to go to even church to be told that uh, whatever thing you do would definitely have or consequentially have an effect. You don't need a church. You don't need this video to tell you that because it's a natural thing. It's a natural thing. Whatever thing we do as human beings, we, we know we don't need anyone to, do, to tell you that whatever thing you are doing will yield a particular Consequence. So this is a natural thing. But before that, I want us to take a swift turn and look at something I just mentioned here. I said it's a natural thing. One of the reasons why we see the law of reaping and sowing, or the, the law of sowing and reaping, sorry, or the, 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 the law of input and output, the law of giving and response, or giving and receiving, one of the reasons why we see it as a natural thing is because no matter who you are, if you are a creature, in this world, you cannot escape these principles that were set in place. Now, there are so many principles that the deism, or there are so many principles that people who believe in absentee God believe in, apart from the, the principle of nature, where we believe that there is a response to every action you make. Apart from that, there are other concepts they believe in. But this is one of the, their primary beliefs. One of the things that makes us be, that makes us convinced that the law of reaping and sowing is a natural thing is that everyone subjected to it is inescapable. That principle is inescapable. No matter who you are, you are subjected to the principle that whatever thing you do, there will always come a time that you respond to it or you 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 enjoy the result of it. So this helps me to write something now like this. You see, one ultimate definition of a thing being natural is its inescapability. So things that are natural, like the principle I just mentioned, the principle of sowing and reaping, is a natural thing. And you can't escape it. If you reap, if you sow good things, then definitely there will always come a time where you are going to harvest good things. 
and the vice versa is true when you sow bad things there will always come a time where you sow or you reap sorry bad things hallelujah the next point i want you to know that is that a natural things means that when we are also i'm looking we are still looking at it the definition of a natural thing when we are saying that this particular law of reaping and sowing is natural it's natural because it means that the creatures assigned to it cannot escape it they cannot bribe it or they cannot prevent it the law of sowing and reaping the law of giving and receiving is natural because we cannot escape it you cannot bribe it you cannot bribe your way out of having or enjoying the the, the, the ramifications of your act for example when you give or when you sponsor someone to do something good the person may not necessarily show it but life itself makes sure that whatever or the good deed that you did for the person will definitely come back to you and there is no way you can escape it it may even come in a way that you never even expected and you cannot bribe it or neither can you also prevent it but there's one thing we can do to it the only thing or the only power you reserve to, to, to exercise is that you have the right and you have the power to, to alter, I mean to change, to affect how it happens and to some extent when it happens. So in as much as you can't prevent it from coming, in as much as you can't prevent consequences from taking place, you can alter how it happens. That is why Paul is saying that if we are going to enjoy, if we are going to reap something in the future based on what we have done, then he's encouraging us to sow things that are good so that in due season we shall enjoy of it. Hallelujah. Because Paul gave us the guarantee when he said that whatsoever a man soweth, he reapeth. Paul was giving us the surety and the guarantee that whatever thing you sow in life, whatever decision, whatever thing you input in life, there will always come out and uh, there will always come out a corresponding consequences or there will be a corresponding output. So, in order to prevent yourself from going through a bad consequences, that is by taking a, a bad decision, Paul acknowledged that let us not be wary in well doing. Paul says that do good so that in due season you enjoy of it hallelujah so this point is that you can't you can't prevent it you can't prevent something that is natural that is the law of reaping and sowing but one thing you can do is you can alter how it happens you can how do you alter how it happens if you want to enjoy your your, your consequences in a very good way then you have to make sure that your input or your decision is good that is basically what i'm trying to say the next thing is that uh, we can alter how it happens and to some extent when it happens you can prolong certain things from happening to you you can prevent or you can prolong it let me give this funny example i believe that people who go to the gym people who exercise including myself are people who are trying to just uh, uh prolong their death we will come to that and you see how true that is but death is a natural thing death is 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 is, is a common denominator that that every human being or every creature that God has created will undergo. But in as much as we cannot escape death because it's a natural principle, in as much as we cannot escape death, in, in as much as we cannot prevent it, in as much as we can't bribe it, we, can, we have or we preserve the right to alter how it happens. That is why you have to eat well so that you won't die out of malnourishment. We have the ability to also to some extent uh, determine when it happens so i exercise you exercise to make sure that you don't die early hallelujah the next point i want us to look is that there are three major things that man as a creature assigned to nature cannot escape i think even in a course right now in the course of discussion i've just mentioned one of them and we got to know the three things that i i uh, three things that uh, all creatures, when I say creatures, including man, including plants, and including anything living on earth undergoes. These are natural principles that affect all creations on earth. The first thing is death. Death is one of the, the, the natural principles that creator, the creator instituted. Death cannot be escaped. There is no one apart from uh, the old story, the, the Old Testament story, where people like Enoch and Elijah, including our Lord and Master Savior, who prevailed over death. Uh, uh, we barely hear of people who were able to prevent their death. People who, when it was time for them to die, they decided not to go. When your time comes, you can't escape. So the first thing that everyone will undergo is death. Is a principle in nature. Everything will die. The next thing that I think is a principle in nature that we can't escape is change. No matter who you are, 
life will change you or you will change in life because if you would remember several years ago you were a toddler several years ago you were an infant you 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 were you were an adult till you became a youth you became a grown-up man you began marrying you started giving birth life is procedural life is, is is sequential we are not static so all things that are created not only man not only human beings but even animals grow animals die as a matter of fact and animals do change you bought a puppy now he's no longer a puppy now he's a well and a full-grown dog hallelujah so everything undergoes change and every human being undergoes change we cannot bribe it you cannot prevent it you cannot escape it and the final thing that is going to drive us home on the subject of consequences one thing that i believe we cannot escape we cannot bribe and we cannot prevent is the third thing that is consequences and this brings me back to our anchor scripture the principle of sowing and reaping whatever thing you sow this 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 principle has been inculcated in nature that whatever thing you sow in life there will always come a time i love what paul said that for in due season which means that all these three things have been allotted to happen and, and occur based on seasons in life so you may be glad doing and taking certain decisions at one point in life but there will always come a point in time paul said for in due season a time will come that the thing you inputted whilst you were young or when you were ignorant a time will come that you are going to benefit or you are going to suffer from that decision but before that i want us to have a quick recap on what we decided we discussed in our previous episode when we we're talking about uh, the power of decision when we, we spoke about you get to decide so the quick the first quick recap i want us to do it. we will come back but the first thing we learned about decision was that the average human being makes about three thousand uh three hundred fifty five thousand decisions within a day and i mentioned that that starts when you wake up to when you sleep again so every day you make an average of three hundred fifty five thousand decisions within a day and let me show you what this may mean if i'm saying that every decision we make corresponds to a particular effect result or ramification and consequences then what i'm trying to say is that all the decisions that then what i'm trying to say here is that each and every day we always face or we are faced with three hundred and fifty five thousand consequences because the research from the psychology today.com i cited this from that every day we make three 355,000 decisions. Then it also makes sense that when I say every day we are always confronted or we are also confronted with about an average of 355,000 consequences based on the decisions we make. The next recap or the next thing I would want you to know that is that uh, one's life from the cradle to the grave is full of uh, a catalog of decisions. This is something I mentioned. This is just a quick recap. So uh, our decision begins from when we are born when we start crawling to when we die this is what the point seeks to make the third point uh, a quick revision and recap the third thing we get to re realize here is that we are free to choose but we are not free from the consequences we got to know that uh the power to make decision is something we are born with is an inherent part of our human nature uh su suppressing or preventing someone from expressing his power to make decision is tantamount to slavery it is only slaves who are sometimes even suppressed and oppressed uh and restricted in exercising their power of decision so decision making uh is, is something that is part of human being the next point is that Consequences, now I'm shifting from decision to consequence. He says that consequence is an automatic response to decision. That is one thing we also got to know. That when you are choosing something, when you are making decision, when you are putting in an input on something, the necessary or the automatic response, the automatic effect you have from your decision is called consequence. Anytime you make a decision, you are making alongside each consequence hallelujah the next thing we also spoke about is that when you choose anything or when you choose a thing you choose alongside its consequence this is self-explanatory hallelujah and the final thing we also learned when we we're talking about you get to decide i think that was the first episode the power of decision the, the, the final thing we, we also spoke about is that it is highly illegal to coerce a person it is highly illegal to force a person to decide on something and withhold the information on the consequences to him this is very very important i spoke that i define decision as being uh, 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 presented with a group of alternatives to choose from 
And in as much as sometimes we are, we are presented to choose from a group of things, I deem it very, very, very wicked, or it's, it's a very wicked act, if you give someone the, the tray or a table of options to choose from, and you do not tell him that, uh, John, uh, James, this thing you are choosing from, this is, the, this is the potential consequences, you should be deemed a very wicked person, because if you would remember, we just mentioned that every decision that a person takes comes alongside a consequence. So every decision we are taking, we should be privy, we should be informed of the consequences that comes with it. Because we can't, in as much as we can't uh, avoid ourselves from taking decisions, we can't also avoid living with the consequences that comes from our decision. Hallelujah. Somebody hallelujah. So now let, let's look at what consequences are i would be very brief with this one because most of us know and have several names when it comes to consequences now i say consequences bears different names I, i'm just going to focus on the synonyms of the word consequences one of the names that uh, consequences bear is reactions so when you give an action you definitely get an effect and that effect is what we call reaction and it's also similar or uh, synonymous to the word consequence the other name that we uh, the word consequence can bear is feedbacks when you give an input definitely you are going to receive an output or a feedback let me borrow one phrase in it they say uh, we say garbage in garbage out so when you put in uh, an information or a data which is meaningless there will always come an output which is meaningless and we call that feedback so another name for consequences is effect so there is always a cause the cause may be your decision the cause or your action and every action and every cause comes alongside with an effect and one of the names that consequences bear is wages which is very very important to me wages now wages is more uh, more likely used in the in more of the financial wealth the, the financial institutions or when you are working employment you receive wage as 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 an em employee you, you, are, you are being paid and why am i saying that i'm so much interested in wages you will never receive a wage if you have not worked what am I trying to say? Let me translate it into what we are discussing here. You would never enjoy or you would never have a consequence if you have not made any action or you have not made any decision. So anytime you make a decision, there is always an immediately a followed up consequence or a wage. Let's look at some of the wages uh, we, we enjoy. So assuming your wage is sin, sorry, your work is sin, the Bible makes us know that the wages of sin is death. So the action which is sin sin as a decision and action when being undertaken the automatic consequence or the automatic wage we we receive is death the bible says that the soul that sins dies which means that sin being the action and the decision when you decide to sin the automatic consequence that comes to you is death the next wage i want us to know, look at is sex it's, it's funny but sex as a decision and sex as an act the moment you engage in it, the automatic response or the natural consequences that should come with it is birth. Is birth. So sex corresponds to birth. There are other things that goes with sex, but I, I thought birth would be okay. You may also contrast contrast STDs if if, if not done through uh, the, the right way or if you're not privy to, to the partner and all those kind of things. Yeah, so and the, the, the last wage I want us to look at is school so you decide to, to embark on education seek higher education the wage you get a certificate hallelujah so what i'm trying to say is that you receive a wage which is consequences if you have undergone or undertaken an act so anytime you are beginning to enjoy or experience certain thing i want you to have time to yourself or for yourself and ask yourself what have i done what was the previous action and decision i took that has uh, that has caused me to suffer or to go through this thing probably deemed as a consequence hallelujah but before i bring my talking or before i bring today's discussion to a closure i want us to look at fun fact fun fact on the subject of consequence i know fun facts are very very good and uh, they help us to understand things better the first fun fact we need to understand when it comes to consequences is that consequences may be immediately felt or felt in the future and how do we know this? When Paul said that, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due time, says that, for in, do not be weary, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, 
we shall reap. Anytime you make a decision, there are some there are some times that we 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 we, we just enjoy or we, we we experience the effect of what we did immediately. There are other times that we also experience the effect of what we did probably sub subsequently, maybe five years from now or ten years from the time you engaged in that decision. But there would always come a time that you suffer or enjoy on or from the decision you make. So the first point is that decisions or sorry consequences may be immediately felt or probably felt in the future but there will always be a time that you feel the consequences of your action the second thing i want us to know is that some are meant for ruin and some for blessings so probably uh, most of the times let me say this most of the times when we are talking about consequences most people see it in a wrong connotation we see it in a wrong way but i also believe that consequences can be a good thing so consequences comes in two shades. They may come for your ruin, that is, they may come to destroy you, they may come to worry you because you made a very bad and terrible decision, which I've said that your decision corresponds to the type of consequences you face. So if you took a bad decision, then definitely the corresponding consequences may ruin your happiness or your life. But if you made a good decision, just as Paul entreated us to make, then definitely the corresponding consequences may be for good. And the third thing I would want us to know is that Nature itself is the number one proponent of the act of this act of uh, well, sorry of this act. And when I say this act, what do I mean? I'm still referring to the law of sowing and reaping. Nature itself, nature itself, supports. And one thing I want you to know that anything that nature supports, you cannot escape. And we listed three things that nature supports. And no one, trust me, no matter who you are, you can't escape it. The first thing we mentioned was death. The second thing we mentioned was change. And the third thing is consequence. If nature itself supports the law of reaping and sowing or sowing and reaping, then you cannot escape it. These are three basic knowledge that I, I think we should, we should get acquainted with when it comes to the subject of decision making. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody hallelujah. I want to bring to this discussion. This, this is basically an introduction to... To, to the four-part series that we have begun. So today, I want to be very, very brief. And I know that most of us have been transformed and touched even by this message that the Holy Spirit has outpoured through me to my hearers. Now, I want, I always do this as my tradition is, I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. But today, I want to do that alongside something very unique. So I'm going to, I'm going to do an altar call. I'm going to call to the altar those who want to rededicate, give their lives back to God. And we are going to pray once again. We are going to pray. This one is going to be a joint prayer. We are going to pray against any effect, any consequences that we are undertake, we are undergoing, sorry, which we think uh, was as a result of evil decisions that we took. And we are going to believe that God is going to change outcomes because it is only God who has the ability to change outcomes. So without wasting my time, I want to call to the altar those that want to give their lives to Christ, those that want to to, to start all over and take good decisions that it may enjoy good consequences. So without wasting my time, may you say after me if you want to give your life to Christ. Say, my Father in heaven, I acknowledge my place as a son who has lost his way. I run coming back to you, for I know it is you alone that is able to redeem me. Say, Father, forgive my sins and cancel my name from the book of death and rewrite my name in the book of life. And when you should return, why I should die? I would not be a missing soul. Now, if you have said this simple prayer, I know that your life has been written in the book of life, and numerous and uh, countless angels are rejoicing in heaven. And just as I said, I want us to lift just two prayers shortly. Uh, we'll just do it shortly, but in your own spare times, I'll, I'll be glad if you would be praying this prayer. We're going to neutralize because I believe in as much as uh, it is a natural principle that when you decide something, you will suffer the consequence. Uh, God has the ability of exempting his children who plead unto him. He, he has the ability to exempt them from, from undergoing or enjoying the consequences of their acts. So I want us to pray this simple prayer that God, any decision that I took several years ago that has come back to bite me, that has, that has, that has bitten me in return, any evil thing that I'm enjoying, I'm going through based on the decision I took several years ago. Father, may you forgive me. I want you to open your mouth and begin to speak right now. That God should pardon you of any decision you took that has had an adverse and a severe impact on your health, your life, your relationship with God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, we pray with the blood of Jesus, which was made to atone for our sins. 
you wipe out all of you bleed the blood and let it cleanse us let it purge let it rewrite the histories of our lives in the name of jesus now i want us to pray our last prayer we are going to pray that let god guide us we are praying that god should guide us to make better decisions the bible says that the heart of a man devises way but the lord orders his steps we are going to pray that let god guide us let the let, let the spirit of the lord be released to guide us in whatever important and ordinary decisions that we are going to make that god will guide us let's open our mouths and pray right now that god will guide us through our decisions in the name of jesus that we wouldn't suffer the consequences of it in the name of jesus father we bless your name and we know that you have done what we have to sort of do. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Now I want all believers to shout a very big amen. I want to especially thank you once again for, for, for making time to, to watch our videos. I'm so much glad uh, with some of my friends or with my friends who have been liking, sharing, uh, commenting, and even to those that have been subscribing, I really, really appreciate you for, 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 for feathering the cause of the gospel. I want to say that God richly bless you. I want you to do me a favor, just share with your friends, uh, share the link with your friends, encourage them to subscribe and encourage them to listen and their lives will be transformed. Until I come your way with part two of consequences or on consequences, I want you to stay blessed and go nowhere. God bless you.